you can um, come back and see the newness in the routine itself. Yeah. And it's just a thought. Um, alrighty. Welcome to Tanya today. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine coming to you from Chabad Zuch and Kadesh in Montreal, Canada. It's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the Tanya we share today with Abba in Morocco. Good afternoon. Elise is with us in West Virginia, Bokatov. Jane is all the way in the Philippines. A warm day there. Imagine, probably have many warm days there. John, shalom to you, North Carolina. And Denise in New Jersey, welcome. Uh, we have with us Simcha in Florida. We have with us Amy in Denver, welcome. Oh, welcome, Amy. And Davida in Lima in New York. I mean, sorry, <laughs> yes, in New York. <laughs> Ah, good morning. Clem in Brisbane, Australia is joining us late at night. Diane in Arizona is joining us early in the morning. Celeste Chava is in Boulder, Colorado. Welcome. Who else is here? We have uh, Vilma and Batya. We have Merle. We have also with us uh, Sakoy in Peru. We have Natalie in Brazil. We have Nikoi. We have Rachel in South Carolina. And to Um June in, is in Australia with us. Leia in Florida. Beautiful. Give me just a moment there. Hmm. Ah, now I see things very differently. <laughs> Jerry in Texas, welcome. Ruthie is with us. Beautiful. Two categories of love, two different types of love. One, recognizing that God is your very soul, your very life. And just as we love life, we love the very source of our life, which is God himself. Right. Then there is beyond how much we want life is the love of the son to a father or a child to a parent. It's, it's a metaphor that ready to risk one's very life, the child, to do something for the parent. They're in prison, right? Incarcerated, release them from their incarceration, putting their life at risk. Why? Because their love for the parents, mother and father, is greater than life itself. Those are two types of love. They, they are really a inheritance that's been given to us by the patriarchs, meaning it is the makeup of the soul itself. God is our very soul, right? Because it's a piece of God. So life itself, as precious as it is, that's how precious God is. Furthermore, God is my father. And therefore, as a child to God, I'm ready to do anything and everything 
to do for his sake, not for my sake, to do whatever he needs from me rather than what I need of him. All that um, is a natural instinct of the soul. Meaning it's the makeup of the soul that God is our source of life and he's our true father. Simple. Yet, even though we call it a natural love and awe of God, nonetheless, we should use our minds, our thoughts, right? To take that which is the natural tendency and the natural instinct of the soul and to actually be, uh, you know, motivated by it, you know, to contemplate and think about it. When we do it merely in as accessing it in our minds, the instinct of that and not developing a feeling for that, then when we do the mitzvah or study Torah as we're doing now, in other words, let's, let's reframe it for a moment. Right now, we're learning Torah. Our connection to the study of Torah now might be because we sense that God is my life and through Torah, I have that connection. Or God is my father and I'm ready to give my all beyond life itself in giving the satisfaction as the child gives the satisfaction to the parent rather than having self-satisfaction. So I'm doing that for God now, and I'm doing that from an instinctual place. So yeah, I'm somewhat, I'm mindful of it, but it is because that's the nature of the soul. That's what motivates me to do it. As a result, the Torah that we're learning now, you have a, a bond with God in the moment, but also eternity to it because it has wings of the awe and love that it's being motivated now by that it goes to the divine above, to the world of Yitzira, the world of formation, the world of divine emotion, uh, the, uh, of, of um, divine instinctual emotion, shall we say. Right? Because that's what inspired us right now. However, if we brought it to our hearts and to truly felt it, in other words, because we pondered it, meditated upon this truth, that God is my very life, my very my soul, my very life, that he is my father, and therefore I'm, you know, even ready to be on my life to give satisfaction to God, as opposed to self-satisfaction, and I ponder it, and I actually have a feeling of that before I'm coming to study Tanya, which, by the way, parenthetically, can't say that I have that. You know, that, or that I pondered it to come to that. <laughs> Even better. I mean, the first level, okay, maybe. Um, I'm saying that, whatever, just to give context for ourselves. Like, you know, don't feel bad that you don't have this. It's okay. You know, maybe from time to time we'll have it. But in any case, the fact that we would then bring it, um, so it wouldn't be just a natural love that motivates us of the soul, but it would be something that we have inspired in us because we thought it, we meditated upon it, and it actually brought some kind of feeling in the heart. And others have brought it from the, the concealment of the heart to a re revealed place because I had a powerful fixation in the mind on the realness of that God is my very life, that God is my father, that I'm ready and devoted to him beyond life itself, the value of life. Right? Um, the fact that I have that a great fixation that brings to a sense and a feeling, then my mitzvah of studying Torah now, or my or my mitzvah that I engage in, 
will have wings that goes to the world of Bria, the world of divine comprehension. Because uh, through my comprehension, I was able to reveal it, to express it, or to, to manifest it in a feeling in the heart. So with this, then we can appreciate that um, these these two types of love have both what we have avaraba avaselo avaraba means a gift from above and at the same time avaselo it's it's a love of the that of the world meaning of the parameters of the world and the parameter of the world and the human condition is that the mind feeds the heart. So we have two things here that are coming together as one. And uniqueness of these two loves, as opposed to just a love that you meditate about God and God's presence and his realness in the world, his realness in your life, right? So that's something totally that you just produce. Because your meditation is thinking about the realness of God as creator. So that's amazing. And that was, in chapter, we're in chapter 44 right now, but that was in the previous chapter 43 when we spoke about the distinction between the two types of love. A love from, it's a gifted from above and a love that we kind of create through our awareness and bring it into our hearts. But here what we have in these two loves, that God is my very being, and he's my, as a child, he's as my father that I'm ready to give beyond my very being, right? That's not even about me in this love. So that's, that's a given. That's a gift. Because that's the nature of the soul. So we have it as a gift, avaraba, this great love that is gifted to us, meaning that it's the nature of the divine soul. But at the same time, we have the capacity, even though it's the nature of the soul, even though it's part and parcel of what defines me, but that doesn't mean I've revealed that within my, not just in within my mind, but that it becomes so real for me in my mind that it actually, I have a sense of it and a feel for it in my heart, which is Avasedam, love that is within the human condition. The human condition, again, is that the mind is aware of something, understands something, meditates fixated on it in such a strong way that it becomes something that you really sense and reveal. And that's ownership. You own that because you've developed, you own it, yet you own something that to begin with is an inheritance, is intrinsic to the nature of the soul. So you have the best of both. And when we speak about love, all right? So in, in, in just put it in maybe other terms, there's a natural love that we have in life. And what's a natural love? Child for a parent. Siblings is a natural love. It's just there, right? You don't have to do so much to bring it out because it's there. Now, sometimes it might be there and kind of buried, but it's there. It's, it's a given. Then you have a love that is between two separate people. You know, parent and child are not separate. Siblings are not separate. They come from the same place. But between two separate people that don't come from the same parents, which actually 
and the epitome of that is husband and wife coming from different places don't know each other you know don't have a natural um, sense of connectivity it's not natural it's unnatural it's yes a desire that you have that you want to connect but it's it's to connect to something that's not naturally a part of you you're incorporating and bringing it making you make one together and that's through you know you become one but you're not inherently one and, and the proof to that obviously is that it can be a divorce so that you do become actually separated from each other but you can't divorce your parents you can't divorce your siblings it's inherent and therefore in that relationship and that's why husband and wife relationship takes much greater effort because it is not inherent so you got to work on it you got to think about it you got to be thoughtful um, working on yourself in order to create then working yourself means you're using your mind and and awareness bring it to your heart right so you can develop the relationship that's just here giving us the idea over here and what we're talking about and just giving it you know a, a metaphor for it all right any questions any comments any thoughts Davida, I love the inherent, then why are there atheists and agnostics? <laughs> inherent means, uh, well, Davida, it's a good question, but can you have some people who will deny um, the relationship with their parents? Deny their relationship with their siblings? Won't talk to them? Oh, you know, whatever, right? How's that happen? Is because even though you have an inherent connection to God, as you do to, you know, your parents, um, you could deny it. Just as you have an inherent connection to your gender, you could deny it. It doesn't make it the truth. It just makes it your your. Uh, choice that has been improperly used. The Rebbe once spoke to someone saying that in our generation, the greatest test is the freedom that we have, the freedom of choice. 200 years ago, you didn't have too much choice as a Jew. You lived in a ghetto. You didn't have that much of the world that you could choose from. Today, you do more than ever. And that's a big test to have that freedom. So we have a freedom that we can abuse and think that we could choose, you know, not to recognize a parent, not to recognize my gender not to recognize God. All of those things can happen, even though inherently you have a connection to your parent and they will be your parent. Even, you know, they might be abusive. They might be bad people, right? But there's still certain laws that might apply in Jewish law towards a parent, nonetheless. And I'm just speaking in general terms and how you behave with them and likewise gender it's inherent you can't change that reality period not a soft period a hard period 
Likewise, we have an inherent connection to God. Now, if you can't recognize your parent, and if you don't recognize even something more obvious, your gender, then for sure it's going to be very difficult to recognize God. And maybe the way to get to this is very simple. If everybody would be learning what we're learning here in Tanya, there's no question if someone who had a gender issue or someone who had an issue with their parents, right? Or a sibling if they will connect to the God in them and to come to recognize it and to live with it as we do every day here together, the other issues would fall away very quickly. Now, the, that's with a caveat. The problem is that today there's such mental illness in the world that you know, just as some people come here and troll at times, come with an agenda, um, you know, trying to bring other faiths, other beliefs that don't belong here, right? And whatever they're listening to, all it is is filling them and giving them more ammunition. They only learn it in order to gain more ammunition for their particular belief system whatever it may be that's part of the mental illness right because there's no true learning there's no little self abnegation to put yourself aside to hear the message what the message is teaching so likewise it can be someone can be here a year with us and they're just holding on to old gods worn out gods gods that are not the god that we are learning and that we need to be connected to wow um simcha is it still possible to still love your siblings even when they don't when you don't like them when you don't like their behavior absolutely absolutely yeah all right more on this to come amazing stuff every day All right, we, we've started now to try to work on the classes and to get snippets from it that we could promote um, and other things. So I'm, I'm just now like starting to focus back on it. I brought it up to people's to your attention before, so I'm bringing it up again. If there's anybody who has some skill in social media or in or just in the class that you know want to help out in any way private message me once again and we're we're making this happen and i thank you all i'm rabbi ronnie fine coming to you for chabad zirchen yudesh from montreal canada it's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you tanya have an amazing great day